Hey guys, I'm Jerry. I'm Sierra. We're ladies, and we tangent. Hello, 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 hello. Okay, hold on. Are we getting sheets after this? <laughs> I've kind of pred- predicted. I've kind of programmed myself. <laughs> Manifested. <laughs> yeah. Well, no. I I said to Corey, I'm like classically conditioning myself because mm. we do it now so much that. As I was driving over here, I started craving sheets, and I'm like, son of a bitch. Yeah. We got too busy doing what we were doing before, and then I didn't eat dinner. I didn't eat dinner. Oh, we're going to have to go to sheets. We have to. Okay. We can't Ready. be hungry. Okay, well. Well, what's, what's up, up everyone? <laughs> Hello. Oh, my God. Melody. Is did that we what do that's it? called? Harmony. Har- <laughs> but did we do it the same notes? <laughs> I don't know what a harmony is. Harmony is when we do two like different, different notes, but they complement each other. Oh, here's a here's here's a fact. I'm tone deaf. <laughs> I don't think that's a fact. Um, I don't know how to tell notes. But you've told me before that you can match pitch. Then you're not tone deaf. But what if I think I'm matching pitch? Nobody's ever told me that I think I'm matching pitch. I thought you said someone had told you in the car before that you could sing. Oh, yeah. Maybe that did happen. Were they trying to sleep with they you? They were also trying to sleep with me. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> that is important well, to know. What if I... Okay, go. Uh, uh. No, you harmonized. <laughs> did I? Kind of. You, like, went a little bit higher. That's what I was doing. I can't match pitch. Mm. Harmonizing, I feel like, is harder. Really? Yeah, Shane's so good at harmonizing. I can't. Oh, really? Yeah. I cannot. I'm sorry. It's a gift. <laughs> it really is. No, I can't do it. But he always goes like the high harmony, and so it's... You're like, I'll take it down here then. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Don't, Don't worry. me in the basement. <laughs> I've got this. Do you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I wish I could sing. One time, I was supposed to sing the national anthem for a basketball game, and they were like do you need the pitch pipe? And I was like, no, I'm just going to do whatever the fuck I want. (laughs) Mostly because I don't know how to use that circle (laughs) harmonica. (laughs) Get it out of my face. And then you did a full on Fergie. Whoa! whoa, (laughs) Say! I did. I did. But I thought it sounded great. Let's play some basketball. (laughs) I thought it sounded fine. That's my favorite. And then I went and worked like the concession stand (laughs) and I secretly was like, I hope I get noticed. (laughs) Anytime someone came up and got a Snickers and I'm like, I'll sign it. (laughs) Don't Don't be weird. That was me. Yeah. You don't have to. I am she. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) No big deal. Yeah. Oh, love that. Grandma. Do you remember grandma made us watch it on TV? Someone recorded me doing it because she was sick and she couldn't come. Aww, and so who she wrote about it in her journal as well. Aww. I felt so bad because our grandma passed away and she kept a journal while she was sick and I have it. And I've had family members of ours reach out and be like, Can did grandma re- write anything about me? And I was like, ah, oh, yeah, somewhere in here. I'm sure she did. And that family she, member was me. <laughs> she wrote about my basketball game and me singing <laughs> this day. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know, there's a lot of me in here. Yeah, it's weird. It's almost like that's why she gave me the journal. Oh, she didn't give it to me. I took it. I know. But I don't know if anyone knows I have it until it, now. It's better that you have it. Because mm-hmm. you're the only one in it. <laughs> there's like a couple other people mentioned. Was I she, one of them? It was like, what's funny is <laughs> there's like passive aggressive Oh yeah, I've, I've stuff read in those. there. That's like, I wish the best for them. And I'm like, mm. Mm. <laughs> you? But was I mentioned? I don't know. <laughs> I feel bad. I don't know. No, I was I a feel product bad that of I... divorce. And stuff. <laughs> I wasn't around a lot. It's not my fault. Mm. My child has the hiccups right now. I just want you to know Aww. that. And she's like straight up flopping her head every time. I can feel it right yeah, now. She's in the spirit world. She's like, Grandma's pissed. <laughs> I just want to give you a heads up. Hey, hey, stop talking. <laughs> my grandma just took over her body for a second. She's like, really? Oh my God, you give birth to Grandma? <gasps> <laughs> That's not the episode. <laughs> you give birth to grandma. I don't know how that's going to tie into fallacies, I but don't okay. Know. I don't, we'll, no. we'll find a way. Oh, Where here's your famous a, Bubba cup. Someone thanks, loves your Bubba cup. I, I love the other one that I got. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. I haven't washed it yet, which is why I'm <laughs> using this. 
But That's also, why I do a lot of canned drinks because I don't have to clean those. I really just, just hate doing dishes. I'll be honest with you. Yeah. And I just put water in this guy. The, the last time I drank mm-hmm. that other thing, I had tea in it, which is why I'm like, I have to wash it. Yeah. But I feel like it's not dirty if you just put water in it. I feel that. And I just drink it all the time. Until my kid drinks out of it. And then I'm, and like, I'm like, ugh, <laughs> dirty. <laughs> Gotta clean Get it now. Get that out of here. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like with jeans. I feel like jeans are never dirty. Yeah. I rarely wash my jeans. I rarely, well... I don't know. Depends. Because I'll throw like everything in one. We've talked about before how mm-hmm. I don't separate correctly. Right. And um I to swallow loudly. It's very hard. Well, I've been noticing I'm breathing really heavy into the microphone. So every time I go to edit the podcast, right. I'm like, oh my God, if I take one more breath, I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, I don't separate anything. Put wet towels in there. So all my clothes, I have to wash all my clothes because they smell like uh, dirty dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just throw my jeans on the floor by my bed so <laughs> they don't go in any hampers and they don't get mixed with anything and then well, they go right back on. I just throw everything in a pile. Oh. So it's also not in a hamper. Yeah. My, see, my towels go in a hamper, though. Mm. Have to. You want to know why? My dogs have a weird thing where they will piss on my towels. On your towels? On my towels. Just your towels? Just my towels. I don't know if it's huh. because they're like, what? All right. <laughs> they're like, these will do. No or one will notice. Nine like percent. Oh, uh oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> We're in for something. It's a good thing that there's I'm a the rooster one. on this. Uh-oh. It's a cocktail. <gasps> but I'm. T- t- <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. No, I'm glad you did it. I'm glad you went there. <laughs> Two dad jokes in a row. <laughs> That's the quality content you guys came for. Mm-hmm. And then an hour of me just rubbing myself <laughs> like a goddamn Sweet. genie. Remember, I used to do that. It's so comforting. It is. Because it's like, this is my own little stress ball. And it's a hard (laughs) habit to break when the baby's not in you anymore and you find yourself just rubbing your belly. Trust me, I know. I did it until Noah was like eight. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And you sway even when you're not holding the baby. When Shane went back to work after Ollie, Mm -hmm. they were doing a presentation and he was swaying back and forth. (laughs) And then all of the people giving the presentation with him were swaying back and forth. They had to stop it and be like, you guys are making us motion sick. Can you calm down? And he's like, I'm sorry, I have a newborn. Please stop moving. Oh, yeah. my God. That's so funny. Yeah, I do the thing where I'll still waddle a little bit and I'll, like, grab mm. my back for, like, a year afterwards. It doesn't even hurt. It's no, just my I'm hand just goes like, there. Ugh. Yeah. Remember that? Phantom ghost pains. Mm-hmm. So fallacies. Yeah. That's what we're talking about today. We're talking about fallacies, which I don't know the definition of a fallacy oh, necessarily. I, have it. I got it for you. But the reason I brought it up is because I think we talked about one of we talked about one of the fallacies we're going to talk about either in toxic positivity or imposter syndrome 2.0. But we didn't really know that we were talking about a fallacy, correct? I knew that we were talking about a fallacy, but I couldn't remember the name of it. Got so it. I just described it. And what I was talking about was the sunk cost or sunk time, sunk cost. I think it goes by either one. Sunk, sunk time sunk fallacy. Cop- Look at me not cost. knowing it <laughs> again. Sunk cost or sunk time. Yeah, fallacy. Meaning like. It's really hard for me to say. <laughs> um, meaning that if you spend like, if you are reading a book and you read two chapters in the book, you feel like you wasted your time if you don't finish the book. Yes. It's, same thing of like you went to college yeah. or started in a career and you're like, Ugh. or got into a relationship. That's mm-hmm. a big one. You're in a relationship and then it turns out being really shitty and you're like, well, I just wasted four years of my life with this person. I, might I guess well I stay. might as well just be married to for them. the rest of my life. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And that's all. I fell not. into the sunk cost sunk time fallacy like oh, heavy heavy hard hard <laughs> <laughs> you know how it be you know how that goes <laughs> um uh and when i saw that guy's tiktok and he's like you you literally don't have to it, it doesn't that's no such thing there's it's, no such thing yeah that's yeah. not a thing and it was it's a the most super, rewarding feeling in the world it was so freeing yes freeing because you feel like every moment of your life is supposed to have meaning and yes. you're like clocking this so much time into different parts of your life and until you die yeah into like education <laughs> or family or relationship hobby and god forbid you feel like you wasted any of that time yeah. but is time really wasted when, when you're you getting, getting wasted, wasted? <laughs> man so i love college. college oh yeah that's what i'm in college right now yeah but even if I wasn't, even if I went for a semester and then dropped out, I still wouldn't feel like I wasted it because I feel like I learned 
a lot from yeah. it. Well, there that's a part a, of it. And there was experiences and moments and mm-hmm. all those things that happened. Same with ex-boyfriends. I never feel like, what a waste of time. Even are though, we going to talk, like explain the sunk cost fallacy or are we just going to like talk right now? I mean, whatever you want to do, but oh, okay. I'm going to explain all of them here oh, okay. shortly. Okay. I just I felt just, like we were like getting into it, into it. And right, I didn't well, want to like go backseat, 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 forksies. forksies? <laughs> Why don't we make that a t-shirt? Because I, I feel like we've said backsy forksies too many times. I know. All right. So I have so many. Let's just start at the beginning. Okay. At the very, if you're hearing the word fallacy. I just heard Hillary Duff in my head. That's a thing. <laughs> I have to physically stop myself from breaking into song when things are lyrics, like when lyrics are triggered in my head. Was so when you said back to, yeah, Hillary Duff, there's a song where she's like, back to the beginning. <laughs> oh yeah, I remember that. Song. So I heard her sing it in the back of my head. She was like living there, waiting for her moment, and there it was. Hey, I, I was like, a baby, "Calm but... down." She's like, "Let the rain fall down." Yeah, that was my sister's favorite song, so she really ruined it for me. Not now, Hillary. I can't with you, Hillary. Get out. <laughs> okay, a fallacy. By the way, this is like pretty much all Wikipedia, so you're welcome. Um, but there's some other things thrown in here. So a fallacy is the use of invalid or otherwise faulty reasoning or wrong moves in the construction of an argument. A faulty fa- reasoning is my band name. <laughs> faulty reasoning is my book title. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Oh, my God. A fallacious. A fallacious. <laughs> oh, fallatio. <laughs> argument. Is that sex? Fa- fallatio is. <laughs> <laughs> I believe. <laughs> We can't put that on TikTok. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I didn't do anything with my hands right there. Do you think they know fellatio? Do you think they flag that word on TikTok? Or are they like, that sounds too Shakespearean. Yeah, they can say fellatio. Yeah. God for, well, we could say poot and front poot. <laughs> well, poot, I don't think is a word. Fellatio. Oh, that's right. Oh, my God. Do you think we could get in Webster's? For poot? Yeah. We could try. <laughs> Guys, how do we get in Webster's? Yeah. Everyone. Hey, Webster. <laughs> Get on Twitter. Follow us on Twitter. We have a Twitter now. Mm-hmm. Ladies underscore tangents. Please go follow us. And tag us and Webster and just write poot. Yeah. And let's see what happens. Let's see where well, let's see where the poot takes us. <laughs> That's what I always say. <laughs> no flaws in my reasoning. <laughs> but fellatio. I don't I don't know. Because I think fellatio. Fellatio. Let the rain fall <laughs> What's happening? I don't know. Okay, this is the content you guys come for <laughs> again. So a fallacious argument may be deceptive by appearing to be better than it really is. So here's the reason you don't want to use fallacies. We're going to explain to you what fallacies are because you don't want to use these. It, and examples of different kinds of yes, fallacies. Because some fallacies are committed intentionally and they're used to manipulate a conversation or mm. persuade somebody by deception. But other, a lot of times they're committed unintentionally due to carelessness or ignorance. However, it ruins your argument your credibility of your argument is all gone. hypothetical right yes. they're all just like imaginative someone in our fangens page Basically, today what fallacies are supposed to do is like derail derail the conversation yes yeah with something that has nothing to do with anything we're talking yes. about or or isn't ever going to happen as a way to be like checkmate i yes. win the, the argument but but you didn't because right. you just all you did was derail it right yeah someone in our fangens page today requested us to talk about like why let me find it okay i'm already feeling drunk (laughs) (laughs) this is i don't know if it's just me but i would love to see sierra and jerry talk about why we create scenarios in our heads that are so dramatic and sad like the amount of times i lie in bed at night and think of scenarios of bumping into my abusive ex or getting into an argument with someone at a party and get myself so worked up about it and for why i feel like this well, number one, I feel like that's anxiety. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but sure. I feel like this idea of fallacies of like creating these scenarios in your head that are hypothetical and hyperbolic and like not helpful at all, even though these they don't overlap necessarily, I feel like they're adjacent. Yeah. So maybe talking about this and kind of retraining your brain not to immediately just create these bizarre scenarios for no fucking reason that yes. aren't helpful. Yes. Is a place we'll to help. start. We'll help with yeah. that. Um, also, but shower fights are so fun. <laughs> oh, I'm yeah. I'm my baddest bitch self in the shower. Yeah, but you know that goes back to what we talked about last week with the Friends episode. It's like, stop yeah. replaying stuff in your head because I shoulda, know. coulda, woulda is not a thing. It's not. 
but I do love you. But sometimes I don't replay things. Sometimes I'm like <laughs> imagining fake future scenarios yeah. so that I can be a bad bitch. Because I'm mm. like, what if I go out and somebody says something about my weight because I'm pregnant now? This is what I'm going to say. You're going to say just, nothing, though. I, I know. <laughs> so what's that do? That sets you up to think you're going to do something. And when then you don't do anything, then and you're I like, feel like well, a I suck. failure. <laughs> yeah. You're All setting right. yourself up. All right. Quit attacking me. <laughs> you're right. Is that what you want to hear? <laughs> there. I said it. Mm, okay. There I go, getting on my high horse again. <laughs> so you kind of nailed it with sunk costs, but um, some sunk? God, that is difficult. I lost sunk where. cost sunk fallacy? Sunk cost fallacies. Um, maybe described as throwing good money after bad. I don't know what that means. Hold on, cut that. Because what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> throwing good money after bad. While refusing to succumb to what may be described as cutting one's losses. Does that make sense at all? Fuck Wikipedia. <laughs> hold, on. hold on. This is 9% alcohol. Whatever you just said didn't, didn't compute at all. Okay, wait. Hold on. This says, for example, some people remain in failing relationships because they have already invested too much time to leave. Yes. Others buy expensive gym memberships to try to commit themselves to exercising and then feel like it's a waste if they don't. Yes. It's kind of a waste. Hello, at me, because I've yeah. had a gym membership for like three years that I've never canceled and I've never gone. Why? Just cancel it. I always just am like, but maybe next week I'll start going. Oh my God. <laughs> I know. I hate myself. Yeah. It's terrible. Um, And then a lot of times there, there's a... In the bigger scheme of things, when it comes to politics and things, people can be swayed by arguments that a war has to continue because lives have already been sacrificed. Yeah, I and never thought about that. Yes, and it's used by certain politicians as a yeah. manipulation tactic to be like, well, we got to do this. Look how many yes. people we've an already... An eye for an eye, yes. like, makes the whole world blind, yeah. my guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it says these types of behavior do not seem to accord with rational choice theory and they're often classified as behavioral errors. So these are not like good <laughs> things to do to yourself, basically, or to have other to people. Keep yourself do to you. in those situations. Yeah. And I feel like people can guilt you with sunk cost because the sunk cost fallacy, I think, is so ingrained in our minds that we can feel pressure from outside sources to stay in things because by proximity, they also feel like they lost time yeah. by investing in us. Well, think about like school loans. Yeah. So let's say that you quit after two years. You're like, actually, I don't even want to do this. And this is a way better job. And I'm just going to take this career. Yeah. But they tell you like, well, you already invested this much money. You might as well just get the degree so that you will spend more money. Mm -hmm. Think about if you wouldn't have gone, then you wouldn't have spent that extra two years of tuition. Yeah. You wouldn't be paying that back at all. Yeah, you wouldn't have a degree, but you're not going to use that degree. Right. That's the thing. It just looks good to have it, but like... But I also feel like in this situation, in that specific situation, because I lived it, I think that's also a dangerous thing. Yeah. Because I... F even though I completed my degree... I was like, well, I wasted five years of my life. I wasted how much money because I'm not teaching. Yeah. I, kn I knew my sophomore year, I didn't want to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. And I was told, finish it out. You've made it this far. Yep. Um, and then figure out what you want to do after. And I did. And I think for a while I struggled. And the only thing that made me not resent the fact that I went to school and that I was teaching for five years was, okay, Jerry, you quit school, you don't meet Shane. Right. You don't have your husband. You don't have your children. You don't have right. this life now that you have. So find a way to be grateful for it. And that's, I think, recognizing in a moment that you don't have to stay in something that's not bringing you joy yes. is important. But if you've gotten to a point where you look back and you're like, I've been in this relationship for 10 years. What a waste of my time. It's nice to find the good. in. Things. Yeah, it is nice to find something positive about it because you can't get that time back either way. Nope. So you can either hate yourself and spend your time beating yourself up about not getting out sooner or you can reflect and be like, what did I get from it? For me, the lessons that I learned in education and while I was getting my experience teaching 
I think is highly valuable. Yeah. Not only for my photography business, well, for but this. for this. Yeah, absolutely. Highly valuable well, for this. The, it, same thing with like, I think about the abusive relationship yes. I was in and like, oh my gosh, what a, not a waste of time, but I just wish almost, sometimes I'm like, oh, I wish it didn't happen. Yeah. But I'm glad it did in a way because it has opened the door for so many more people to come out just me telling people about it yeah and because of that i'm like i don't feel like any of it was wasted or yeah um like not a good use of my time right i feel like it was worth it yeah i mean you you make the best out of the situation yeah because either way you're not going to get the time either way you did it you already did it yeah so that's the thing but what i don't want people to do is to feel like they have to commit to something if they are realizing like, oh, this is right. not what I'm happy doing. Right. Like, and don't and if it, you end up wanting to do it again, you can always go back. Maybe yeah. not with a relationship, right. <laughs> like with college and stuff. I did, yeah. or with a book. Yeah. Like you pick it up, you put it down. Um, I know that there's so many in my pursuit to find something that I wanted to do um, outside of teaching. Basically, I was searching for my out mm-hmm. for years. Yeah. And I tried so many different things. And they didn't work out. Yeah. Um, I was going to be a baker. Turns out you like aren't allowed to have your dog in the kitchen <laughs> because people don't like dog hair in their cupcakes. Yeah. And I'm like not that detail oriented. No. Okay. I'm not that. I'm going to have a special place to go and make these cupcakes. Yeah, no. I'm, oh my God. You have to wash the dishes. I only have one mixer Mm-mm. and I made multiple kinds with different icings and fillings. I went all the fuck out, but like, <laughs> ugh, yeah, I couldn't do it. It was a no for me, but I know that. It was looked at as a failure. Mm -hmm. Same with my string art thing. Yeah. When I did string art, everybody was like, oh my God, that's amazing. You have to monetize that. Make that a business Imagine what you could have done if you wouldn't have given up. Yeah. Imagine what my back would be like if I didn't give up. My hands. My God, that was so like rough on my body. And not to mention, you guys were kind of not paying what you should have. (laughs) (laughs) So don't tell me. Yeah. I wouldn't be making that much money. I'd probably be barely breaking even. And then I'd be unhappy because I'd still be working a full time job that I didn't like. Right. I didn't want to do it. And I, it wasn't, I don't think it was a waste of time because I still have those skills. I can do that for a fun hobby. Yeah. I can do it in my free time. I just don't have to make that. You could pick it up or you can put it down. Yeah. Like, that's the thing is, um, like, I think that Simone Biles right now is, like, being talked about so much yeah. because she decided to sit out. Um, I don't, was it part of the Olympics? I don't watch the Olympics. We don't have cable. And, like, yeah. I find sports weird sometimes. <laughs> Even <laughs> though sure. I, was, I was an athlete growing up, like, I just. I think that might be why. Maybe. Yeah, I'm just so turned off by certain things surrounding it. I think those athletes are amazing. I don't love how they're treated. Yep. Um, and I just, I can't, I'm tired. Um, but she spent how much fucking time and energy and pushing through all of these things to get to this elite level, to get to the Olympics again, Yep. only to walk away to prioritize her mental health. I and all these that. people are looking at her like, what was all that for then? Yeah. What would it all be for then if I wasn't here? Yeah. If my mental health took me, if exactly. my men- if I succumb to these things that I'm struggling with, and I'm, I'm not trying to say that she is in any way um, in danger. Like I don't, I'm not, I don't want to assume like where she's at, right. but, but assuming like where I know where I am in my mental health, when I decide to step away from things it's for a reason you don't make a decision like that lightly yeah and it's a reason to believe that she if she's obviously loves it as much she does that she put so much time and effort into it that she did not make this decision just like on a fucking whim yes and i think that so often when people abandon um goals or relationships or like anything that it's believed that it was done callously or mm-hmm. just like cavalierly. Um, it's just like, oh, look at them being yeah. in, almost like an entitlement. Like, uh, that's what I feel like we get told, like, oh, li- t- entitled again to just throw it away. And it's like, yeah, if it's not, bring- you can't stick to anything. Yeah. Well, if it's not bringing me joy, why the fuck should I stick with yeah. it? Yeah. So I can be miserable in my 50s. I don't think <laughs> I've talked about this, but um, I know that I was vocal about the photography workshop that I wanted to start for moms. And that was something I was incredibly, I still am incredibly passionate about. Um, the whole focus of it was 
helping moms prioritize their mental health and learning how to feel uh, enough in their business and um, in their family and in their home. Um, but it got to a point where it was detrimental mm -hmm. to me and my health and to relationships that I had with other people. Yep. And I decided that it wasn't worth it. Pursuing that at the cost of my health and well-being yeah. and my time wasn't worth it. Nope. And that was the first first or second time that I had looked at something like that and walked away because there was a huge amount of shame and embarrassment, I think, I comes with say, things like this. I was going to say, I think you should be proud of yourself because that's, oh, that's a huge, huge thing to be able to do is to re like prioritize yourself above all else. No Simone Biles, but... <laughs> well... <laughs> I mean, but I did do I'm proud first. of both of you. <laughs> <laughs> but I, and I never wanted to talk about it on here because it's embarrassing. It's it is embarrassing. embarrassing. That I've I, never brought up the string art thing. Yeah. I just pretended like it never happened, really. Yeah. And then when people would ask me about it, I'd be like, oh, what are you talking about? And <laughs> like, I think that's it's what... embarrassing because I started not loving it anymore and looking at it as I didn't enjoy it. And I, um, it was something that I was like, I don't know the word, that, but I was starting to feel like not good when I would think about it. just anxious and not, yeah. it was, it was like, you have to be perfect or you're a failure. You're a failure. And I couldn't do that anymore. So stepping away from that, um, but I looks think like a failure, but I think I was just protecting myself because I knew I was going down a dangerous road of, but I think that's also why it was hard for you to get out of your relationship oh i God, know it was so that was, much that was why it was hard for me to get out of my abusive relationship because i didn't want to admit that i had spent so much time and energy investing in this person and like severing ties with people that yep. i loved i was willing to fucking die on that hill same and it felt like not only did i lose time but i look like a failure now yep. i'm embarrassed yep i couldn't make this work. It's all my fault. And I feel like that's why people um, feel ashamed when they leave college or when they leave a job or why they're afraid to leave a, even a healthy relationship, yep. just one that's not making them happy. Yep. Maybe they're afraid to come out to their partner um, as like a different gender or a diff uh, sexual orientation. Like there's all of these things that keep you in this box because you feel like I've lost so much of, my, I've spent so much of my life this way now. Who cares? Right. Who cares? Exactly. We care. We do. We care. So should we move on to you? I feel or? like we should go on to another fallacy. Okay. I, Cause we could talk about that one the yeah. whole time. I feel, yeah, um, I feel very passionate about it and I hope that other people, um, can kind of evaluate their, you know, how they're spending their time and if they want it to still be something that they want to spend their time doing and not feel guilty if they decide not to. No. Yeah. And you don't have to explain it to anybody. Nope. At all. Nope. It's you Isn't and only so you. Cool? It's so cool. Ain't nobody need to know why. That's kind of what I loved about what Simone Biles You don't even did. have to know why. Yeah. Yeah. If you're just like, it feels wrong. That's so no. When I can't put it into words how I feel about the stringer thing, mm -hmm. I, I don't like... I can't put into words. It made me not feel good anymore. Yep. And I was like, I don't want to do this. Marie Kondo your life, people. Yeah. If it doesn't spark joy, baby, get yeah. rid of it. It doesn't have to be a physical thing. It doesn't. Okay, the second one I want to talk about is a red herring fallacy. Is so, that me? Oh, I'm not a heron anymore. Red you said herring. herring. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, it's a literary device fallacy. Burping. I'm so sorry, everyone. It leads readers or audiences towards a false conclusion. So basically, let me give you, I'm going to give you an example here from a time that we all remember, which mm -hmm. was when the Black Lives Matter movement in June of last year was like really hyped. Everybody in the world, it felt like, was talking about it. Yeah. And it was all over social media. Here's where we saw fallacies happening the most. Um the red herring fallacy. Well, all uh, the multiple? a lot of them. Yes. So, but with the red herring fallacy, so it's a diverting away from an actual argument by bringing argument by bringing up another issue. Politicians do this oh, all the fucking yes, time. Yes, 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 yes. I remember this all the time. But here's an example: using incidents of black on black crime or civilians killing police as a reason to do nothing about racism or police brutality has nothing to do has with it. Nothing to do. Neither one of them. We can have a conversation about black on black crime yeah. sometime, and it's still systemic racism uh -huh. and police brutality is still a fucking problem. Yes. You could, both of them can 
the same thing with like when everybody was like, oh yeah, you're talking about this, but nobody's talking about all the children oh, who are being yes. taken. Oh my God. Stop diverting away from what is we're trying to talk about. Both of these things can happen They're simultaneously. Both problems. And we can care about both of them and want both of them to change at the same time. Stop trying to take away from this by pushing everybody. And that's what was mm -hmm. happening. Whether you knew it or not, if you were contributing to it, that is what they were doing. They yes. wanted your eyes away from this because it wasn't good for them. I'm speaking mostly about the government. <laughs> yeah. Um, in the, the people who were yep, benefiting. Yes. They didn't want us to know about it. And the easiest way to do it was to get those conversations going on or the they, sideline. Or it's not necessarily that they didn't want us to know about it. But I think they wanted to be like, there's so many problems in the world. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh my God. Do we yes, have to we really focus it. on this right Yeah, now? we get it. That's a problem. But this is a problem. And this is a problem. And this is a problem. Yeah. It's and like, it's, so we so, should work on all of these, maybe. Yeah, so we do nothing? Is mm -hmm. that what you're suggesting? How about instead of bringing me other issues, you bring me solutions? Yes. Hmm? Or at least have a conversation with me so we can get to a solution. Yeah. Like not Let's having schedule one at all. it. Let's <sighs> schedule this block of time. We're going to focus on this and not fucking bring up all of these other issues. Yep. And then we'll table that conversation because there's no fucking way we're solving it in one right and then we'll talk about this if you're so fucking hell bent on it but you know what we're gonna have to go back to this other one because yes. it's not done till it's solved yes and the same thing was happening when people when covid started and everybody mm -hmm. was like oh well what about the flu oh well this then blah 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 and people die from car accidents this many a day that's fine <laughs> we know that but also a lot of people are dying from this and yeah. so it is still a problem right. i know that you want to talk about car accidents now for some reason which <laughs> you never wanted to talk about before but in heart attacks <laughs> like, like people became really fucking health heart conscious yeah. for some reason and i was like really i've served you so many cheeseburgers <laughs> like let's not pretend that now we care about heart health all right yeah this is both of these are problems i agree mm -hmm. but this one you seem to care about this one in this moment to distract from, from this, this one. one which is a, which is becoming a big problem mm -hmm. so that is why we don't like the red herring let's move on because we have so many yes <laughs> straw man is next um, a straw man is a form of an argument and an informal fallacy of having the impression of refuting an argument, whereas the real subject... God, this is so like... I'll break it wordy, down for you in a minute. Wordy. Thank you. Whereas the real subject of the argument was not addressed or refuted, but instead replaced with a fake one, uh, a.k.a. a straw man. Okay. Like a friggin' scarecrow. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's where that name comes from. So it says instead of like if you and I are having an argument and then all of a sudden I started attacking this straw man, which is like I didn't even fucking it's kind of very similar to the red herring. But again, I will give you an example. OK, it says arguing against an oversimplified or distorted version of your of your opponent's argument. So example would be when the Black Lives Matter movement was very big hashtagging all around. Yeah. Distorting the hashtag Black Lives Matter movement by saying that its supporters hate all white people and all police. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, here's what the real issue is. Uh -huh. And then you're like, what I hear is that you fucking hate all white people. <laughs> yes. And you're actually the racist one. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And it's like, that's not what anybody is saying yes. at all. It's almost like devaluing what's being said by sensationalizing it and turning it into Making something else. Making a big else. scary boogeyman out of it. Yes. There was another, uh, most of these were done by... <laughs> A former politician. <laughs> but that's what happened a lot was I'm going to make this thing. Yes. Um, and then and then that's what I'm, gonna I'm going to argue. I'm going to create this narrative of this scary person who hates white people, who hates. That was the thing. It was like, oh, if you support the Black Lives Matter movement, then you hate all cops. Yes. And I'm like, that's not what I said. Yeah. I said I want accountability. I want reform. I want systemic change. Yeah. Um. I didn't say death to cops. Yeah, exactly. So I don't know why that's what you're turning this I into. I just had a horrific thought of like someone <laughs> just like chopping that, part that one part. Oh my god! Please it's don't. Because, do that. It's because I saw that one Beyonce video where they like chopped her speech and she was basically like telling people they're pieces of shit. And I'm like, so I just imagined someone. Yeah. So that's an example of a straw man moving along because. We can. Because <laughs> we're in charge. So it's my fucking podcast. Yeah. False dilemma fallacy. 
is when only two choices are presented, yet more exist. Mm. So a spectrum of possible choices exists between two extremes. False dilemmas are usually categorized by either this or that language. Yep. And there's so, so many things in the middle. I know. Okay, yeah. So it's it's like, oh, if you don't like America, get out. Yeah. What? <laughs> that is not what the fuck we're talking Why? We want change and reform because we love it and we want our co- better yeah. for our country. Well, if you don't like Did it, then you Did we trick you, you guys into a political <laughs> podcast today? <laughs> I'm sorry. But that's just the easiest way for me to describe these because in the last mm-hmm. year and a half, this is what I've been seeing so much. And you're, remember when we talked about cognitive dissonance and we talked about counterproductive habits of mind? I feel like when you realize that your brain automatically makes these assumptions about things, Mm -hmm. then you are able to check yourself before you wreck yourself and you're able to reroute it. Same thing with cognitive dissonance. Oh, I recognize that I'm rationalizing why I'm smoking this cigarette right now so Mm -hmm. that I can continue doing it. This is very similar to cognitive dissonance. That's, That's what I feel like is important to understand what fallacies are so that you can either recognize when you're using them or when they're being used on Uh, you and you can cut through it. Because I think that people who use them, like you mentioned earlier, don't know that they're using them. And that's why I'm sorry to make it political if you're like, I hate when you guys get political. I apologize. But at the same time, I believe in you guys i think that you're better than that (laughs) and i think that you if you don't know that you're doing this i want you to be aware of what you're doing when you're doing it which is um unintentionally or intentionally manipulating a conversation and uh it's a fear tactic it is and it needs to stop because so like problems don't get solved when these are introduced into the mix and what happens is a lot of times these aren't always your initial thoughts it's yeah. you parroting what someone else has said and i know i'm guilty mm-hmm. guilty as of parroting what someone else has said same seeing it but, and being like oh that's a great thing to say i'm gonna say that yeah next or time. i'd like to adopt that thought into yeah. my mind <laughs> that's but, fine now <laughs> yeah but certain politicians will say things and then other people again and people will regurgitate them why thinking, this is such a big thing was because a certain politician that yep. people or people who supported that politician. Well, I've never seen people really. And I know that I know that there are a multi- politician this way. Yes, and before. I know that I, I want to say we are speaking about one very specific politician. And yeah, I, he's not actually a politician. He just claimed to be a politician, and he got a title <laughs> of a politician for a while. But I also know there's that so many that politicians do that we voted for they are guilty of this because it's just so ingrained. It's in politics. Yes. Because it's the way to win people over without mm-hmm. actually saying what you should say. Yes. Yeah. And it's yucky. That's why I want to say. But mm-hmm. again, the reason why I use that specific politician is because I mm-hmm. know so many people followed yeah. what he said and regurgitated Well, I know it Clinton back. used it with his war on crime. <sighs> Whenever he was like, we need to get more people in the streets because crime. And it's like, you created this entire scenario yeah. of these these people being violent. Yeah. Nancy Reagan did it, too, with the war on drugs. Yeah. Kind of situation. So. Which is, um, we have a big problem. And this is what the scary boogie monster thing is. When really, I mean, what, that was like 70s and 80s. There was yeah. a lot bigger problems, okay, going right. on. And. We could focus on all of them at the same time, but I think maybe a little marijuana wasn't the biggest fucking yeah. issue. Yeah. Nancy. <laughs> um, okay, so another example of this is reducing the issue of police brutality to supporting public safety or supporting black people instead of acknowledging that you can constructively do both. So, say, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know how that's, hold on. I'll repeat it one more time because I was saying reducing- a drink and my swallow was very loud. <laughs> Reducing the issue of police brutality to supporting public safety or supporting black people. Like you can do one or the other, basically. Oh, yeah, you know yeah. What there's I'm no saying? in between. There's yep. no in between. You either. That's, that's what I meant earlier by saying, like, if you support the Black Lives Matter movement, then you hate police. Right. Or, or that you, you wish want, harm upon them. That you want no form of laws or anything. Yeah. Which is great. It's like a huge, like, one big thing or one big thing. Yeah. And Can't I remember when. Um, I remember when it first came out when people were talking about police reform Mm -hmm. and they were talking about um, defunding the police. And I know, probably not the best title, I know the intent was to restructure what was going on to better educate people, to have more services available, um, to give just more resources. That was the intent. 
or the conversation rather. And people would look at that and be like, well, have fun with no police. Have fun when someone breaks into your house. And there were those commercials. What are you going to do when this yeah. happens? And it's like, um, if you were listening to what we were saying, there would be a separate person set up yes. to handle that situation so that it wouldn't fall on yep. just the police officers yep. to do everything. Yeah. There would be institutions. We are reallocating these funds. And so I that know for a fact that there are people in our audience from other countries mm -hmm. who have shared with us that different forms of police, different... Yeah. Um, for, I don't uh, resources are available for different things yeah. and that they look at our system like it's bizarre. Yeah. So I know that it can be done. I know right. that it is being done. And I'm not saying that some, I can look at another country and be like, let's do what Denmark does. I don't know. Right. I don't know what the right answer is, but I just know that it, what's happening isn't okay. Exactly. It's Next okay. I have the ad hominem which is short for argumentum ad hominem, and it refers Ooh. to several types of argument. Some, but not all, are fallacious. Love that word. Fallacious. It might be fallacious. <laughs> I think it's fallacious. I'm going with it. Because salacious is a word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Salacious, not salacious. <laughs> and it should be. I wonder if it's someone's name. I'm naming my son <laughs> Are you gonna have another I'm getting child? really, really confident with these. Salatio Parsons sounds like a dish <laughs> at an Italian restaurant. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so this term refers to a rhetorical strategy. <laughs> Are you drinking? Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> no. Strategy where the speaker attacks. Uh, uh, uh. Another one for politicians. Are you ready? <laughs> Again. Think about the first 2016 election. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Typically, this term refers to a rhetorical strate strategy where the speaker attacks the character, motive, or some other attribute of the person making an argument rather than attacking the substance of the argument yep. itself. Yep. Well, that happened to me. This avoids genuine debate by creating a diversion to some irrelevant but often highly charged issue. Like, let's say somebody's child being a having a problem with drugs at some point yep. in their life, which has nothing to do with the way that our country is fucking ran. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. But that's happened to me before. And I, I know there are so many people who can relate to me, uh, black women especially. Yes who speak in a certain way or defend themselves or are impassioned about something. And then all of a sudden it's are, turned around like, oh. Oh my gosh, I can't even. You're so angry. You're aggressive. Why are you so angry and aggressive right now? And it's like, you didn't hear a damn word I said because nope. you looked at, you heard my tone. Yep. And for these other, not just women, I know it happens to black men as well. Yeah. You looked at them mm -hmm. and you didn't hear anything that came out of their mouth because you were you too thought... busy judging them. Yep. And labeling who they were as a person, you put intent on their words, and you did not hear them. Yep. That, th th whatever the fuck you called this one. Ad hominem. <laughs> that hominem pisses me off. It pisses me off so bad. Another one is saying that someone is uneducated, and therefore mm -hmm. their opinion is invalid. By the way, stop fucking doing that, guys. It yep. is classist as fuck. Not everyone, especially in the United States, but even in the world. But everyone here doesn't get the same education. So And that also that doesn't mind. mean, oh my God, that's ageist as well, because yes. I can't tell you how many people who are older than us yes. have listened to us speak and have already discredited anything we have to say because, because of our age yeah because of the amount of time we've spent on this because earth you don't have enough life experience i've done so much life already <laughs> yeah well the internet has like yeah i, I sped already, up some shit for yeah. us for sure um the other one and is, it's more accurate because whatever you got in your textbook i already know was fucking false and whitewashed yep yep you can um, the other thing is calling. I didn't know I was going to get so angry at this. I'm oh, sorry, I know, guys. I thought fallacies were going to be fun. No, fallacies are. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the other example they say is give, calling someone a snowflake instead of gauging in, in a discussion. Yeah, that's so uh, not offensive because I don't even want to say that because when I say offensive, people are like <laughs> <laughs> extra <laughs> snowflake. <laughs> but like that is so not productive to yeah. fucking anything. If somebody is telling you why something is. Um, harmful to someone else, mm -hmm. immediately discrediting them by calling them a pussy, a snowflake, or some version of that mm -hmm. for explaining to you why something is harmful 
what what that doesn't do anything but make you, you yeah you don't get to decide that yeah and and what you did was still harmful so really what you should say is i don't give a fuck that i'm hurting people because yeah. that's what it is yeah you be don't clear. give a fuck just be honest about it yeah. yeah don't call someone a snowflake don't call someone a wimp don't make fun of safe spaces say what you really mean which is i don't give a fuck that i'm hurting people <laughs> <laughs> and, and let's just be real but if you don't feel good about doing that then maybe you should change. Yeah, that's a you problem. Yeah. Stop manipulating people into thinking that they're the problem for wanting harmful things to stop happening or to them. Or that they're weak yes. because they're affected by it. Yes. Because it doesn't affect you. Yeah. Which goes into my next one, I think. Why did I think this was going to be like fun and I like, wasn't going to get <laughs> angry? Remember when I'm I said sorry. tequila made me fun and now I'm like, you want me to fight somebody? I'm going to fuck a book. Talk about fallacies. <laughs> forget forget. give me a Coors Light. Talk about fallacies. See, I told you it was going to be a good one, but I didn't mean fun. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I yeah. just meant informative. <laughs> yeah. You um, misled me. I did and I apologize. Yeah. You created a straw man. <laughs> <laughs> the next one is anecdotal evidence. So it's a term referring to evidence that is collected in a non-scientific manner and supported by isolated specific instances of an event. It relies on personal testimonies rather than on scientific evidence and coincidentally is considered the weakest type of evidence. For example, saying... Is this like hearsay? This is like saying, well, I've never seen anything racist happen, so it doesn't oh. exist. I've never seen police brutality, so are they really, is yep. it that bad? Mm -hmm. um, does it happen that often? Because I've never actually witnessed I've it. I've never seen someone be sexually assaulted. No, so, so how, oh, all how many of, of these sudden? women are actually saying the truth? Because I've never seen yeah. somebody get, yeah. I've never seen a man cat call and grab a woman's ass. It's like, and I, as a man, do you think that, that you would be front and center for those and also do you think you'd be paying attention right. do you think that these people who are doing these horrific things are just out willy-nilly some of them are yeah. some of them are because they know no one's gonna fucking say anything and we've been so trained to keep our mouth shut yep. because no one believes us anyway yep and uh, well you bitches i'm getting i'm getting to a point I'm where heated. i'll fucking out you i don't care <laughs> do it i know your names do it what are their names i'm not gonna do it right okay <laughs> But you, if you see my face and you know you're someone who assaulted me, know that I know your face as well. Yeah. And, and I know I your remember. social security card. <laughs> <laughs> I know your social security number. I know your address. I know your mammy, <laughs> your mama, your pappy, and your daddy. Oh, well. And when I'm strong enough, I'm coming for all y'all. <laughs> Do it. Do it right I now. I won't. <laughs> okay. Well, you should. I'll just talk to Barbara about it. Do you know what else we should talk about? Mm. COVID-19. <laughs> <laughs> Because that's a uh -huh. light topic. Yeah. Why? Other than my sexual assault? Actually. <laughs> yes. Okay. That and vaccines. <laughs> okay. Are you ready? Yeah. How which many people are still listening? <laughs> which, one, which one makes you more uncomfy, everyone? <laughs> okay. So I'm going to do, I'm going to give you a quiz. This okay. is going to be fun. I'm going to say some quotes that are from actual like news things or social media and you get to tell me what kind of fallacy it is okay oh my god I'm i know gonna this fail. <laughs> you're gonna do this to me after i've had two shots of tequila in this drink well i was gonna ask do you want me to or i could just tell you what it is so it's all these fallacies that you just talked about yes and i have to guess which one yes Oh, my God. Okay. Okay, ready? This one says, information that I saw online about COVID-19 disease causing sterility in the summer was removed. I heard it's because of lawsuits related to Bill Gates and the vaccines in Africa. This is kind of hard because a lot of these fallacies are kind of all the same. But does this have anything to do with the COVID-19 vaccines causing infertility? Oh, my God. Is that the most recent one? I don't remember all the... Tell me all the names again. <laughs> Red herring, straw man, ad hominem anecdotal sunk cost that felt like anecdotal that was a red herring <laughs> that was a red herring red herrings are seemingly relevant arguments that serve to distract from the point at hand in this example the discussion of removal of information and lawsuits involving bill gates distracts from the primary concern related to covid19 vaccines causing infertility by the way they don't i know so many people that got them and are pregnant now i just want to say that or stayed pregnant or stayed pregnant um I'm entirely too fucking drunk for this game, but I'll play. <laughs> okay. You don't have to guess. I could just tell no, you. No, I want to guess. Okay. In addressing this concern, it is important to focus on the question related to the vaccine safety rather than the tangent tangential? Tangential. Okay. 
tangential oh my discussion. God, it's like a version what? of our name. <laughs> well, that's you why I felt like excited, but I was like, well. <laughs> related to online information lawsuits. Number two. Okay. I heard we can't trust the AstraZeneca vaccine because that company is aligned with the eugenics movement. Eugenics is about like sterilizing. Yeah, yeah I know what eugenics is. I'm well, I was asking because all, I didn't know. I'm trying to remember all the the fallacies. Okay. Just guess one. Give them to me again. No. Ad hominem. You're right. It is? Yes. I really just wanted to say that word. <laughs> no. Well, this is because it's an ad hominem attack because it focuses on the company making the vaccine instead of the vaccine safety. Mm. While it seems like it could be relevant information, it distracts from the point that COVID-19 vaccines were tested in large, well-controlled clinical trials and they do not cause infertility. We've tested yeah. them for a while. Um, See address- how tricky these are, guys? Not even just like to tell between each other, but to like... Point when out. You, yeah, when you first hear it, you're like, oh my gosh, that is concerning. Yeah. Because it pulls on your emotions. Be- that's exactly what these do. These put pull on you to in fear or some kind of sadness. Yeah, it evokes an emotional response that yes. makes it difficult to, to just sit and separate facts. Yeah, yeah. Address this argument by focusing how we know the vaccine is safe rather than the issue brought up about the company. Mm. Number three. Nope, just kidding, because we didn't talk about that. <laughs> Uh, we did talk about that one. This one. This is my last one. Okay. If the vaccine doesn't prevent a person from getting infected and spreading SARS COVID 2, why should we get vaccinated? Oh my God. All of these are about the vaccine. I thought they were going to be so very different, but they're so very similar. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that one's got to be. Why should I do it? I've never. That's fucking. What was the last one we said? Anecdotal? Yeah. No. It's, Fuck. It's false dilemma. Oh, I forgot we did false dilemma. Because it assumes there are only two options. The vaccine works or it doesn't. But most things are not either or situations. Yeah. In this case, it is useful to point out that even if the vaccines do not completely prevent it, prevent infection they can reduce the severity and duration of illness decrease an individual's capacity to spread the virus and prevent hospitalizations and deaths that's Mm. the thing it's like yes you could pass it on you could also still get it but yeah that doesn't mean that you shouldn't get it at all that because look at all of these things that it can lessen yeah if you do yeah. come in contact with it for these reasons getting vaccinated is still a value unfortunately in the current environment False dilemma is one of the most commonly employed logical fallacies, which is either or, which is you take it, you're a sheep or whatever. You know right. what I mean? It's just kind of like, a, yeah, there's an either or situation. So not an, a lot of people are getting. There's so many times that I've heard. Sorry, again, that we're talking about yeah. this, but it is frustrating because there's so many people I know that are like, well, I'm for sure not getting it because there's just not a lot. There's not enough information about it. Yeah, but there is. But there is. There's yeah. so much. You just have to find it. And or it wasn't it's not out long enough. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> they, but most vaccines that we have that we know yeah. about now Flu that are shots mRNA. Are like, yeah. Um if you have any kind of reaction to it, it happens within the first 2 months. That's why trials are as long as they are. There's a reason why they do the things that they do. Long-term effects from vaccines usually don't happen. Right. You don't find something out 10 years from now because that is shed. For, it's gone from your yeah. body after a while. That's why you have to get boosters and things like that. So since it's been a year, that's enough time to know if there was things that yeah. were happening that we yeah. should be concerned about. Yeah. <sighs> How do you guys feel? Let's debrief. Apologies. But I think these are important just because I don't want... I want good conversations to keep being had, and I am so against manipulation. It literally is, like, something that triggers me so hard when I can see that someone is trying to manipulate my words in a conversation or an yeah. argument. I will instantly or get... Or invalidate me. Yeah, I'll instantly get defensive and pissed and be like, well, fuck you then. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm fucking... What's well, because you called? feel, like, backed in a corner. Yeah, and I just want to be like, you're steering the conversation so far away. Yeah. Let's stop doing that because... Well, it's a form of gaslighting, I feel like, because you feel like you're crazy. You feel like I'm not an effective communicator. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm not educated enough. There's like something that's going wrong between what's coming out of my mouth and And what's reaching your head. (laughs) Yeah. 
And that can feel like an incredibly powerless place to be. And I think that if we have conversations with family members, like if you guys have conversation with family members that you disagree with, I know a lot of you like um, have differing opinions from your family members. It can be super, super difficult, yeah. especially if it's you're upsetting. younger. Yeah. If you're younger and you can't escape it. Yeah. Because I think that's a really, really tough thing is when you don't have a way it, not only I guess for age but if you are in a relationship with somebody that you completely Oof. disagree with on things yeah and that you may not find out about Until, for years to come yeah and the other reason I wanted to bring this up was because with this like we said with the sunk cost fallacies the reason why I wanted to get a little bit into the politics part of this mm -hmm. was because I feel like there's that um bit of shame and like things that we feel when we feel like we have to stop something that you feel if you are so committed to being either red or blue. Oh, yes. I was just going to say this. That when an argument pops up, you feel like I have to commit to this. I have Even to defend if, this because I'm a lifelong color. Because I color. have to. Yes. That's, you hear yourself? I'm a lifelong color. Yes. But you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I feel like it's important to talk about these fallacies because they're tricking us, yeah. everybody, into not having good conversations with one another, with facts, with evidence, mm -hmm. with um, people's like active, what they're experiencing and yeah. things like that. Um, statistics, think, all of that. And I think it can be difficult too when it comes to, we didn't really touch on faith and religion, but I think that this can be dangerous in those arenas as well because um, when it comes to faith, it very much seems like a you're in or you're out. Yeah, It's an or. all or nothing yep. type thing. Either you believe all the stuff in the Bible and you follow Commit everything. Commit to these, it 100%. Yeah, everything these people are saying. Or you're not a good Christian or yeah. you're not a good whatever. You're not a good... You're kicked like, out of our club. Yeah, <laughs> and that I think is just so, so very dangerous. It is. Um, and I feel like it leaves no room for conversation, nope. no room for growth, no room for understanding love and acceptance. Yeah. So I guess the whole point of this was I didn't know that it was going to be so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. The whole point was I was listening. I didn't know how to tell you what I was. I know. But I was like, I think it's going to be good still. It's informative. I hope so. I hope. I hope you guys got something from it. You connected with something or uh, if you had like an aha moment um, or you felt validated, will you share that with us? Yeah. And if not, so we'll see you next week. <laughs> yeah. Um, but they can't all be winners. Yeah. Well, I felt like I was listening to For Better and Worse and Rachel had her sister on and her sister, Laura, was talking about um, the sunk cost fallacy and how she had gone to grad school and she felt like I've been here for one day, might as well stay for the next five years. Yep. And it's like in that, in your mindset, you're like, well, I've done one. I might as well do a thousand more. Right. Um, but that's not always true. And I thought, oh my gosh, how many people get stuck in jobs they hate, in relationships they're unsatisfied in, in hobbies that they feel drained by. Um, and faiths that they don't feel connected to or beliefs yeah so uh, i i wanted to at least bring that one up and I, when i realized that there were so many other fallacies that can like basically manipulate our minds into feeling imprisoned yeah. by society yeah um or feeling invalidated i just wanted to bring it aware because i feel like these are seeds you can plant into your mind to challenge yeah negative thoughts or negative um and because we have people who are so high up doing it yeah that it's hard well, you have media outlets like amplifying those voices yep. and they're all it seems like all of them are so all or nothing yeah you have to do this 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 and this to be on the blue side and you got to believe this 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 and this to be on the red side and like yep. if you don't then I don't know you. Even if you don't agree with me, do you really want to be them? Yeah, and it's so yucky because it, it like it leaves no room for mm -hmm. any kind of growth. It feels right. like they're both just doing it to like I don't know keep our Win? well and yeah <laughs> yes. that and so that we keep pitting against each other so that we just stop being like hey this is a problem that affects like kind of all all of us. of us so maybe we should work 
together yeah because this is a big issue yep. that is going to affect some some of us and all of us at one point or another right so we just i felt like this was a way to reclaim power so we wanted to share some of these things with you so that you could be aware of them to challenge them. Um, yeah, because and- it's important to challenge yourself. It's important to never stop growing, never stop learning. Mm-hmm. Um, there are times when I'll see on my Facebook like arguments that I had back and forth with people, and I'm like, why? <laughs> I'm I'm doing the thing that now I yell at people for doing. Yeah, But it's it's that's a good moment for me because it's like, look how much I've grown, that yeah. I can see that in myself and be like, yucky <laughs> Why you're you bad don't do that yeah and i wish i could apologize to those people but i'm sure they it was one yeah second of their life and then it's gone but like i think that's important to always remember like you don't have to win the conversation yeah you don't have to win the argument it doesn't have to be about i just want to win this um w- the reason you're having the argument is probably there's a bigger issue behind yeah. it and that should be the focus the focal point the focal point i think should be I hope that if you're someone who finds yourself speaking over other people or invalidating other people, and you might not mean to, but just listen. If someone Mm -hmm. is telling you something is bothering them, something's hurting them, something they're experiencing is negative, just listen. Just listen to it. Don't get defensive. Don't try and prove them wrong with other things of your experience because it doesn't matter in that moment. Um, And don't do it to yourself either. Don't validate yourself. Um, that's the with, other thing we can fallacy in our own mind yeah to ourselves yep so okay well okay. i don't know did you guys have fun are you <laughs> are we having a good time i don't know i'm just gonna drink my cock tail <laughs> we'll, we'll get and to we're some lighthearted stuff soon i we're promise go to sheets or some shit i don't know i'm sorry <laughs> i'm sorry do you know this it? is good uh, this is what they need <laughs> oh no she's <laughs> weepy no i'm okay okay i'm okay i just you want some? It's a heavy hitter. It was a heavy hitter. I um, apologize, but it, I think so. I it's feel bad. I feel bad. It's only Tuesday. I know. And now they got to go through the rest of their week, like just fucking ready to fight someone. <laughs> don't fight people. No. But if you do, don't use a fallacy. <laughs> 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 Moral of the story. Okay. Okay. Um, that's with that on fallacies. fallacies, guys. Thanks for hanging out. We'll see you next week. We love you. All right. We're out. Goodbye.